Hi, I'm Derek Robinson, and I'm a senior online course developer here at InterSystems. And today we're going to talk about the source control architecture of Health Connect Cloud. So when you're first getting started with Health Connect Cloud, you'll likely be orienting yourself to the three-tiered setup that comes default with most, most Health Connect Cloud deployments. That is three different levels of deployments. You have dev, test, and production, Health Connect Cloud deployments. These are separate instances of Health Connect Cloud running in AWS accessible via your cloud portal. And associated with each of those deployments, you have a specific branch in your GitLab repository, dev, test, and production. And the overall GitLab repository comes with your Health Connect Cloud deployment. It's the tool that's used for source control, for change control, for CI, CD pipelines, and things like that. So if you're totally unfamiliar with GitLab, I definitely recommend looking at some of GitLab's learning materials and documentation to help you better understand some of the terminology and workflow here. But in this video, what we're gonna go over is this overall architecture. We're gonna talk a little bit about the different types of branches that you can create and use in GitLab, how those you know, match over to your Health Connect Cloud instances, and how you can use different namespaces on your Health Connect Cloud instances as well to be able to build your interfaces. The example that we're gonna use in this kind of story is of Joe, who is our interface engineer. And Joe is building business process one, okay? That's the simple example that we're gonna use here. He's building a new business process that's gonna do some message routing, maybe use some business rules. Whatever the case, Joe's gonna build a new business process that he wants eventually to show up in his production Health Connect Cloud deployment. But of course, Joe works for an organization that has checks and balances and rules in place. And so Joe can't just go directly put something into production. It's going to go through the pipeline and it's going to be approved by the different people that are, are there to ensure quality and things like that. So from the beginning, let's start by doing a little bit of terminology with these branches. As we talk about these branches in GitLab, there's going to be three different branch types that we're going to talk about. The first one that we're going to do is protected. So the branches that you see on the screen here, dev, test, and production, those are what we're referring to as protected branches. For example, Joe can't just go commit something into dev and make it show up or commit right into test or production and make that show up. Those branches are protected and they require approval on things that are being merged into them. They also can't easily be deleted, overwritten, things like that. Nothing can be deployed into that without the appropriate approvals that are put in place. So those branches are protected, but there's two other branches that we're going to talk about today, which are feature branches and environment branches. Now, I'm going to get into more of those details as they come up in the story here, but keep that in mind as we go forward. Feature branches are going to be sort of smaller, isolated branches for individual component work, and environment branches are going to be for someone like Joe to be able to have a reflection of the dev environment that he can access within the actual deployment. So let's start by the first process that Joe might start with when he's creating his BP1 business process. He's first gonna create a new issue in dev, in the GitLab repository. And an issue in GitLab is basically gonna represent a unit of work, something that needs to be completed, like a task or something that's a deliverable for the team. So Joe creates this issue BP1, and with that, he's gonna create a new branch. Now this branch is going to be called BP1. That is a feature branch, and he's gonna create the branch from dev. So when Joe creates this feature branch BP1, at the time he creates it, he has a copy of dev. So as Joe begins to do his work, there's really two different ways that he can go about it. And as you go through the Health Connect Cloud training materials that we have, there's really a two-pronged approach here that you can choose which way you make these changes and build your interfaces. You can go via code or you can go via the UI. So let's first talk about the example of code. If Joe's gonna start with a code-based approach, then he will have VS Code set up, probably with his inner systems object script extensions, and his VS Code will be connected to his GitLab repository. So he has access to you know, the, the GitLab repository and the branches within it. So when he creates his BP1 branch and connects his VS Code to that, it's really as simple as making his changes and committing them into source control. So as Joe makes updates, he can just make commits to his BP1 branch, and those are being tracked in GitLab. Now, committing to, to the branch is gonna keep it local if he's working in VS Code until he actually syncs those changes to GitLab, but you can follow some of the more 
specific step-by-step -step instructions for our code first workflow to see how that really works in more detail. So that's example A of Joe being able to make changes mostly via code by making updates in VS Code and checking or committing those changes into BP1, his branch. But there's also another way that Joe could do this, which is to work through the UI. So in this example, you might be wondering, well, how can Joe work through the UI if the only thing he can access is the dev environment that he can't just go openly update? Well, first of all, he could go update things on here, but the ISC branch is essentially overwritten by the GitLab runner every time that it's updating from the GitLab source control branch over here from dev. So you don't want to really be doing work directly in this ISC namespace on the dev branch. Now, this namespace called ISC is really the main namespace, and each one of these deployments has a similarly, similarly named primary namespace. And this namespace might be ABC if it's company ABC or whatever you choose to have as your primary namespace that will be set up so that the GitLab runner knows where to deploy the things that it sees within this dev branch. So as we look at the ISC namespace there, that's not really where Joe wants to do his work. So instead, Joe will create a new namespace called Joe. Now, Joe can go work in this namespace, and as he's working there, he can use the Git UI plugin, which is a plugin available within the Health Connect Cloud user interface, that will allow him to choose a branch that he's going to be checking out while he's working in the Joe namespace. So as he's doing this, he might decide, you know what, I'm going to assign that BP1 is the branch that I'm checked out to. And then as he starts building components or adding business rules or adding some you know, routing rules to his production, to his specifically to his BP1 process, if he uses the Git UI plugin to add those things to source control and commit them, he's really doing the exact same thing that he was doing via code, except he's now doing it via this UI and this namespace named Joe, and he's using the Git UI plugin to make those changes. So we've now looked at this, diff this kind of two-pronged approach of how he could be making changes, putting them into BP1, and kind of working through creating uh, his business process and keeping it all source controlled in his BP1 feature branch. So now let's say that Joe is satisfied with his work and he's ready to kind of see how BP1 behaves with the rest of the components that are in the production that exists on the dev kind of deployment here. Now keep in mind that when Joe created this Joe namespace, it was pretty much an empty namespace, right? And he was able to create his component and make changes and be able to commit those to the BP1 branch, but he's really seeing it kind of in a vacuum when it's being worked on in a feature branch. So what Joe can do now is utilize the environment branch that we talked about earlier. So let's take a look at how that works. So if Joe creates a new branch from BP1 and he names it Joe, this will be an environment branch. And now the key important thing here is that the name of this branch is, is Joe because what GitLab is doing is GitLab is constantly checking to see if there is a namespace on the associated deployment of Health Connect Cloud that is named the same as the branch that has been created. So in this case, the branch Joe actually matches the Joe namespace. And what GitLab does automatically is deploys the contents of this branch to the namespace. Now, if you think about it, that's a little bit different than before because before Joe was just working in this UI as a means to check in files that he was updating to be able to commit those to his branch. In this case, now that it's an environment branch, Basically, GitLab, upon every change, is going to deploy that to its corresponding namespace in the Health Connect Cloud instance. So you don't want to do this if, you're, if you have something in there that is ready to be overwritten. But in this case, we have made this branch from the BP1 branch. So everything that Joe was working on to create BP1 is just going to be refreshed into that namespace now. And it's also going to have everything that was from dev. So the environment branch is constantly deploying. You know, each time a change is made, it deploys to the appropriate namespace, which gives Joe a more holistic view of everything. So let's say that Joe looks at everything and says, you know what? Yes, I think that this all looks good. It's time for me to merge this into the dev branch. He can go to GitLab and create a merge request. So when Joe creates a merge request, he says, I want BP1 to be merged into dev. And that's where the maintainer, Jess in this scenario, is the maintainer of this organization, and it's her job to approve everything that's going to be merged into these protected branches. 
So Jess sees that Joe has made a merge request for BP1 to be merged into dev. And some of the things that, that Joe can do here with this merge request, there's a couple of ways that you can keep things nice and clean. One is that you can squash the commits, which means if Joe made 10, 11, 12 commits to this BP1 branch, when the merge request happens into dev, you can choose to just make that one commit for the cleanliness of sort of the tracking. You'd still be able to see the things that existed on BP1, but when it comes to the changes, rather than having them each show as different commits, they could all show as a single commit during this merge to the dev branch. The other thing you can do is you can choose to have BP1 removed as part of this merge request being completed. So when Jess approves that merge request, basically the previous the BP1 branch that he was working on can be removed because it has now been merged into dev successfully. So there's no reason to keep that behind. All of the items there that were existing and cluttering up our diagram here with that BP1 feature branch are now gone. Keep in mind, the environment branch, Joe, is still there, but deleting that branch will really have no impact. Deleting that branch does not push a, you know, delete everything from the Joe namespace. Deleting that branch simply will delete the branch in GitLab, and that namespace will still be there until the next time it gets overwritten by an environment branch or removed or updated some other way by the user. So at this point now, Joe's changes have been rolled into dev. And of course, once that uh, merge request is complete, dev runs that over and things will show up in the ISC namespace, which is the namespace that is the primary official namespace that the GitLab runner will be showing changes into. When Jess or whoever at this organization is responsible for moving certain commits or the entire thing up from dev to test, they create a merge request to move to merge dev into test. Same scenario happens there. And then likewise to make the merge request from test to production, eventually your changes get rolled all the way up into production. So that's kind of a high level overview of the branches, issues and merge requests, how you can work through the code or UI first approaches. And understandably, it's, it's, it can be a complex uh, process in certain points, but our more detailed learning will walk you through some of the step-by-step -step there. Hopefully, this gives a high-level overview of the source control architecture in HealthConnect Cloud.